Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to have a look at something a little bit different. We're going to have a go at modelling um, the sword and the scene that you see in the image on the left hand side. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into three parts. So the first part is modelling the handle. Um, so I've got some reference images, I'll show you how to import those, but then we're going to use the revolve command, the emboss command, chamfering, and we're also going to mirror bodies quite a bit more. So we're actually really only going, to, only going to model a quarter of it, then we're going to mirror it over to the other side, and then we're going to mirror it onto the reverse side. So just a nice little trick to use if there's symmetry in a model, rather than modelling the whole thing over and over and over again. You can just do a little part and you can keep mirroring it over. It just makes your life a little bit easier, or a lot easier actually. So that's the first part. Second part, we'll look at modelling the actual blade. Again, we'll look at mirroring, so we'll do a quarter of it, we'll mirror it across. Then we'll look at using the pipe command. And then the last little bit, we'll look at adding material to the model, uh, combining the models um, to, if, from multiple files and to make things look more realistic, do a nice little scene, those sort of things. So just for your reference as well, these are the reference images I'll be using. So the one in the middle is the canvas that I'll, I'll bring in. It's just taken off Google. Um, so yeah, if, if you don't know, it's the Master Sword from a game series called The Legend of Zelda. Um, the same um, theory behind modelling this would work for any other reference image you get. Do spend time looking for a good reference image, it makes your life a lot easier. This even had measurements on it, which is like perfect. Uh, and then the, the other images are just there, so when I start to make it 3D, I can start to look at how really it should be looking as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a, a canvas or a reference. Go to insert, and we're going to go to canvas insert from computer and I should have saved oh, that's from a previous project so sword modeling and this reference image here now it's up to you which plane you put it on I find putting it on the front one is a little bit easier in terms of the camera I did do this before and I did it on the, the bottom plane and it just made the camera was a little bit more difficult to control so I'm going to click on here and then hit OK and then what we want to make sure we do as well is just make sure, so we go to canvases on the left hand side, right click and calibrate. I'm going to zoom in. Now thankfully I found a quite a good reference image that tells me the size it needs to be. So I'm going to click on top, click on the bottom there, and you'll see it should be three, and now it's back to front. So actually let's just do one thing first before we let's escape that. Let's just edit feature, let's just there we go. So flip it round. Now let's calibrate it just so we can read it. So calibrate. Let's click on the top and then the bottom. And it says clearly there. So this is in inches. So um, we're working in millimeters, but you can still put inches in. So we'll do five and one quarter inch. And you'll see that it's calibrated. <coughs> excuse me. It's calibrated it, but it's done it in millimeters or inches even though we are in millimeters so you can if you're in millimeters just type in in or if you're in inches and then you type in mm or cm it will convert it for you anyway okay so let's have a look so we're going to start with doing the handle first so let's start by doing a sketch and pick this plane i'm going to zoom in and Really what we're going to do, so I'm thinking we're going to do a revolve for this first part of the handle and then we'll end up modelling half or a quarter rather of the, the hilt to then protect a bit of the sword and then we'll mirror them over. So let's go on line, so L for line, I'm going to create an L. I'm going to go halfway and let's bring it down to here. Now it looks like it wasn't quite right, so I'm gonna double click move it just I'm trying to make it in line with this sort of little like bit here. There we go. So that looks like that's much more in line. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is basically use the line tool again and sort of trace over where it is. Now for this little bit here, I'll use the arc command so I'll press escape, I'll go to create and arc, three point arc, so I'll click here and here and then so 
like that, and then I'll do the same. I'll do art here, so I'll click here and here, and just sort of adjust it. Like that. Maybe I'll have a little fillet so it's not very sharp. Let's. Okay. And then we'll go back to the line command. So L my keyboard. Let's come in a little bit. And obviously, the more you zoom in, you can end up like making your reference image quite blurry. But it's good. We've found a quite good detailed uh, reference image, so it's worth spending the time trying to find as detailed a one as you can. Because it makes your life a lot easier when you need to trace over things. So there's a lot of zooming. This is why it's good to have like, a decent mouse as well with a scroll wheel. Okay, we'll go back to the arc commands. Let's go to create an arc. Annoyingly, there's no um, keyboard shortcut for arc. At this point, at this point, like that, and then we'll just finish off, go to line, come straight across here, like that, and then it should, when you click over it, go completely blue because that means it is a closed profile. If you do that and it doesn't do that, it means somewhere there's a little hole somewhere in your profile. So I'm going to go to finish sketch, go to revolve there, or you can go to create and revolve, and it should automatically select the profile you want. If it doesn't click it that way, then the axis is that middle line that we did. Like that, and hit OK. So you can see if I turn my cameras off, we've already started to get the basics of our handle done. So turn our canvas back on. So now let's... Let's flip this around, so we can flip it this way around. Let's just, again, we're going to start a sketch. In fact, before we do that, let's... So we're looking at it from this side. So what we're going to do, we want to start a sketch so it's like right in the middle. So just to make our lives a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on Construct and then go on tangent plane, I'm going to click on this side, okay, so I've made a tangent plane there, I'm going to do the same on this side, tangent plane, like that, and then I can just click on a mid plane, so I'm now going to be right in the middle, so I'm going to go to mid plane, click on that plane, click on this plane here, and now I've got a plane that's going straight through the middle, so I can get rid of this one. Clicking on it and pressing V on my keyboard. B. And the only reason I did that was just so I know I've got this plane that I can draw in perfectly that's right in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to go on create sketch, select that plane. And the same sort of thing. I'm just going to go around and try and trace the outline. I'm only going to go up to this part here, um, first of all. And I'm only really going to do this left hand half because we're going to try and mirror it over and then we'll mirror it on the back as well so we're actually only really going to do like a quarter of the work that we need to to do okay so i'm going to hit l on my keyboard so it doesn't really matter where we start so let's start from here and let's come up And all we're doing is just go around tracing the reference image as accurately as we can do. If you don't match it up perfectly, it doesn't matter, obviously, because you're just using that as a reference, you may end up changing it slightly if you want to as well, that's absolutely fine. Okay, 
we've got those bits done. So now I think really we're going to have quite a bit of um, using the arc command here. So let's go to create and arc. Let's do there, there. And the last little part here, like that. Okay, so again, we're going to move into another area. So I'll just bring it in. Okay, and then if you ever want to trim a little bit softer, you just press T on your keyboard to trim. So I want to make sure these are all going to be closed profiles, and at the minute they're not. So what you can do, you can go to Modify and Extend. And you see what's happening if I look in there. So you see where there's little gaps. If I go to Extend and hover it over, it will go there. So that's now a closed profile. And you can see it's become a closed profile now because once I click on it, it'll start to do that. Whereas these ones aren't at the minute. So I'm going to go back to extend and just work my way around. There's all now. Yep, those are all now closed profiles. This one isn't yet because it needs to. Let's extend that as well. Let's go to create, or no, modify and extend. Okay, and then we'll do the last few so to create arc. Just finish off the line command. I should now have, just double check everything that I've done is now a closed profile. Looks like it is. Okay, so now we're going to have a go. I'm not finished yet, I'm sort of extruding those up to make it look realistic. So I've got a few of the reference images. So we've got the canvas that we've got in, so you can see what it's meant to look like um, there. But I've also got a few reference images here, so I can look in a bit more detail of how they'll end up looking. So we've got that one, and then we've got the whole thing there. So what we're going to do... Oh. Okay, is we're going to go E for extrude. I'm going to click on this side, and then I'm going to click on the side, and start to drag it up and see about where do I reckon it should be. So I'm going to turn it out a little bit, then I'm going to go to... Symmetric, so it does the same on both sides. But no, I don't want it to be symmetric because I'm going to mirror it. So I'm going to do one side. I want to like protrude a little bit beyond this part of the handle just so it has a little bit more protection. Okay, and we'll just like that. And click. No new body, go okay. And we're going to do the same for all of them, so we're going to click E. Oh, so our sketch is just as vid, so we're going to go to the left hand side, do sketches. Click this one here, click on E, click on this profile. Now we could drag it up again, or we could just click on the surface and it'll jump it up. But you've got to remember it's going to try and join it, we don't want it to join yet. We will join them together, but not yet, we're going to do a new body. And you can see it's a new body now, because there's a line in between the two of them. And that's what we want, because we will join them together. 
but we want to add a chamfer and things to it before we do that. So again, E for extrude, bring it up, new body. So again, E for extrude, click on that height, new body, and just do the same thing for all of these little profiles. I'm just going to keep looking back at my reference image here just to see how it should look. Okay, so I'm just going to turn my cameras off a second so you see sort of what we've done. So we've extruded it up a little bit. So obviously that's not the shape it is. It's, that's the overall outline, but we, if you look at those images, we've got a little bit more like a chamfered edge to them. So that's what we're going to add to it, which is why we didn't join in the first place. So we'll go to Modify and Chamfer. Click on this edge and drag it in a little bit. Control on the same side here. Not quite, let's bring it back a little bit. Like that. Click OK. And let's do the same on these other pieces as well. So let's go to Modify and Chamfer. Oh, I clicked the wrong part. Let's go to modify chamfer. So this edge, this edge. That's not the edge I meant to click. There we go. In a little bit. Click OK. See how it's starting to look. Quite nice. Same again. Modify chamfer. Okay, last couple. So what I'm doing is trying to select, so there's obviously there's two edges there, I'm just holding down with my mouse so that I can like pick through, and it's normally the second one, but that might not always be the case. So in that instance it wasn't the case, so we'll cancel that. We'll try it again, we'll go to modify, chamfer, click on that edge. Go for that edge. Okay, so I've, I had the surface selected there as well, so let's try that again. Let's modify chamfer. So I just want that edge. This edge. There we go, that's the right one. So we shall start to look a lot more realistic. Let's go back to our reference image. Okay, let's 
go back to whichever. Okay, so that's the first little part of that handle done. Starts to look really, really good. So then we're going to add some chamfers to these parts as well. So if we look back at this reference image, we'll add some chamfers along here. So let's have a look at doing that. So let's go to modify chamfer. Okay, so I might have gone a little bit too far. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's probably a little bit too far. So let's not select that surface first. Oh. Let's go to modify chamfer. Let's just do this side first. Right, let's leave it. Right, that I think is probably fine. Yeah, that looks better that way, I think. Then let's just chamfer these parts. Oh, wrong edge. No, I've got one more surface. Want that edge. Oh, wrong edge. It can be a little bit fiddly sometimes to make sure you get the right edge selected. Come on. There we go. And then the last little one. We'll chamfer this bit here. Put it in. Like that. Okay. So we have a look and see how it's starting to look. Quite nice. Let's compare that to the original. I'll say we're not far away. Okay, excellent. So now we'll start having a look at uh, the little bit here in the middle. So let's have a little look at that. We'll put our canvas back on. So yeah, we'll focus on put our sketch back on as well because we've already got that. So we can start to do these little bits as well. So let's have a look.
Okay, so let's select profile, east extrude. And then let's bring it forward a little bit. Maybe bring it to about that height. Okay. And then let's do the same with the other profiles. So bring it up to there. Remember to change it to new body. Again, new body. E up there and then new body. Okay, perfect. So let's turn off our camera so we see what we're doing. So same sort of thing as before. We don't need our sketch on anymore. So if we're looking at our reference image, let's see what kind of thing we're doing. So we're gonna a little bit more chamfering and then we're gonna mirror the whole thing over, I think. So let's have a look. So let's start with chamfer. I'm just going to keep clicking back and forth towards a reference image. And we're just trying to make things look as right as possible. If you, you're trying to do it and it doesn't look quite right, that's why you can always just alter it a little bit as well. Okay, that's that let's then have a look, go back to our reference image. Okay. Again let's go to chamfer. So let's jump Then the last little bit I think we have left to do is just this little diamond shape in the middle. So let's just have a look how that's supposed to look. Okay, so let's do modify chamfer. Excellent. And then the last little bit we'll do in the middle. So go to modify and chamfer. Like that. So basically we've only done a quarter of it, so we're gonna mirror it on the right and then the back as well. But that's sort of what we're after doing. So we've got done quite a lot of work on this little detail, so there's quite a lot of detail to it. And we did all as separate bodies, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all of these together. So let's actually just find out, so that should be our handle, I hope, there we go, okay. So now, as you can see here, we've got all these different bodies here, okay, which can get a bit messy. So we're just gonna combine them all together. So I'm gonna select them all, go up here, go to combine, hit okay, and you'll see now that they disappear. So now it's all one solid body so then we'll have a look at mirroring it and then start to add some more details to it as well
Okay, so let's turn this body off here. So we've got just got this one. So we're going to mirror it. So we're going to go on uh, create and mirror. So type we want to mirror body. So I want to mirror that body. Mirror plane. I can just rotate around and say along there. Hit OK. We can take a little bit to load, and you can see straight away already we've now got our perfect left and right. Now obviously we want to do the same on the other side. So we'll do the same. We'll go to create and mirror bodies, mirror plane. Because it's a flat edge, we know we can just do it that side there. Hit join. Hit OK. We've now got our top bit. So we spent quite a lot of time just doing one quarter of it, but then it was nice and easy because then we could just uh, add in or just mirror it all across. And then we've got our handle that goes straight down the middle, nice and proportioned that way. So let's just combine all that together. So let's go to combine this body and this body. Hit OK. So we're not far off to having the handle done, which is definitely the most detailed part of what we need to do. So if we have a look at our reference image, well, there's like this sort of lattice pattern going along the handle, and it was on our reference, uh, our canvas as well. So we're going to do that with emboss. So just quickly, I, wanna, I did this before, and then I didn't try it to see if it works. So I thought of a new idea of doing it. So I'm going to go to expect and measure, just out of curiosity. Uh, okay, so that... What I've done is I've gone to inspect and measure to try and get the, uh, like basically the circumference um, of it. So I'm going to just try and see if this works. I'm going to right here loop blend. I'm going to click on click to um, copy to clipboard. I'm just going to click on that and close because now I'm going to try. I'm going to click on sketch and I'm going to click on this plane and I'm going to rotate it around. And then I'm going to start a sketch like that. Click on D for diameter. And I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste in the length I put in because hopefully that means it will wrap around. You'll see what I'm going to try and do in a second. Okay, so that's the length. That may not work, so we're just we're trying it out to see. It just may be a slightly better way of doing it. So what I'm going to do now is basically try and just do like a freehand lattice type pattern. I'm going to line. I'm going to start coming across like that, and then I think what I'll probably do is go to create. Let's go to rectangular pattern. And let's pop those numbers. Let's try like ten. I'll extend it outwards. Maybe I'll do a few more. Like Twelve. Okay, and I'm going to use our extend. Uh, command that we used before to so extend just to extend it so it goes to complete the whole profile. Okay, I think maybe let's add in one more extra line. Uh, Let's see if I can go back and let's try create rectangle pattern. Struck it once more there, is it okay? Add this body a second. 
Okay, so now I can save out the profile. I don't want that line, so let's just delete that bit. Okay, so I've now got all those profiles along there. Now I'm going to have them going the opposite way. So let's see if this works. Let's select all of these. I'm going to hold down Shift. Select all of these. Just the lines, not the profiles for now. And I'm going to go Control C, Control V. Then let's rotate them. Bring them down. Click OK, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to extend these a little bit. So now you can see I'm getting these little patterns that I was after. So I'm going to have to modify, extend. So it seems like we're doing quite a lot of like legwork to try and get this pattern to make it like equal, but I think it probably just makes it a lot easier than if we were to try and freehand it so we know it's all gonna line up. And hopefully the thing I did before with the measuring has worked well, otherwise I'll cry. But let's just give it a go. Okay, and I think I'll just trim all these excess just to make it so it's not as messy of a sketch. We don't need these extra bits anymore. They were just there as a reference earlier. You don't need to trim these, you could do it without, but I quite like it when my sketches look don't look messy. Some people don't seem to mind it, it's down to preference really. Okay, so the whole point of that really was just to get these patterns going across. I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to create and emboss. I'm going to say, what profiles do you want to emboss? So we're going to do these profiles here. Now obviously we'll have one to go in the opposite way as well, so let's go this one. Hopefully now that I'm highlighting them, you can see it's starting to make sense of why we did what we did, like that. And then faces, turn the body back on. What face do I want to do it on? I want to do it on 
straight through. Okay, so what it's saying there is the error, because that's what I was trying to avoid, because last time I did it, that's what happened as well. But um, it's not a big thing. So if I look at this error here, you know, sketch profiles create an intersecting body. Basically, it's saying that this bit is too long for to wrap around, um, which is what I was trying to avoid, but it's not a big thing. Basically, we're going to do a little bit of trial and error now. So let's go to edit sketch. And I'll do it shorter first, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to come down here, go finish. Same again, let's try emboss. So now I'm just going to do it up to that line and see if that works. So it's a little bit of trial and error. We tried it, it didn't really work. Probably should have tried it before doing the video, but the idea just came to me as I was doing it. Faces, body background. Okay, still, still not. So let's move this this way a little bit more. Let's just try that again. I don't want those ones, I want these ones. Okay, so there you go, you can see that's wrapped around, and obviously I've got a little bit too short, so I can actually make that. So let's change this depth. Let's turn it to like point five. Okay, so you can see it's wrapped around. It's got the effect that we've wanted. So I'm going to change that a little bit less. Let's try point two. There you go. That's a much better effect. But you can see that it doesn't match all the way up. So actually, I can move that line a little bit. Way. Let's try like that. This is probably the most time consuming part of doing it. What it was when I did it the first time, practicing as well. So once I've figured out the measurements, it'll make it a lot easier for you to follow along. I've still got a little, so you can see just a little bit of gap there, just a little bit more that we can move that across to. So let's just, hopefully, third time lucky, or whatever time we're on, 50th time lucky. Let's just move this section over like that, and then let's just 
One more time. We hope. Okay, let's try. Can you see it's still not quite up there, so I'll do. I'm going to just mess around with it a little bit longer because I've only got a tiny, tiny little bit left. So let's just go. Let's do edit feature. Let's just turn my sketch back on. I just need to move it over just a fraction more. Got it this time, I can feel it. Let's try it like. There. This is it. This is the winning one. I'm gonna create emboss, and then profiles. Faces. Oh, the tiniest, tiniest little bit left. Okay, we got this. This is the one, I can feel it. Come on, let's go. There, that's it. This is the one, this is definitely the one. We have got the tiniest, tiniest little gap there. So I won't bother going back to change that now, but you can see how you would change that just little by little. But you see, the whole point of doing that was really so we can get that little lattice designed to it. So we've got our handle uh, now finished. So what I'll do is it's all combined together, so it's now one full body. So that's kind of the end of the first little part. The next part, really, what we'll look at is doing the blade. Again, we'll do the same sort of thing as we'll do a half of it and mirror it over. Uh, we'll do a quarter of it rather and mirror it over to the right side and then mirror it onto the back as well. I think I probably will go back and just make sure that I get my emboss perfect as well. So 
Uh, let's just go back over. I know it's not exactly the most exciting thing in the world to watch, but. I think that's as close, maybe, maybe one nil, a bit more. Okay, so what you're saying is the error was that. There we go. Okay, so that was the perfect amount. Spent far too long trying to sort out the grip on that, but I think it's probably worth it. It probably looks much better in my opinion. It's a nice looking sword handle. Okay, so let's have a look at doing the blade. Let's turn our canvas back on. Okay, so let's do like we did before. We're gonna create a sketch. Not on whatever it thought I was going to do a sketch on. Let's create a sketch of that mid plane. Let's go this way around because I just find it easier to work that way. Let's go online. Let's just try and find the exact top there. And let's come down. Let's just come down into the actual body. I want it to be at 90 degrees exactly, so why won't it snap? That's 90. There we go. Again, I'm just going to come into the body, it doesn't matter how far into it, like that, escape. So that's how it's going to be our mirror line. So now I'm going to have a go at sort of tracing one side of it, it doesn't matter which side you choose. Let's go to viewpoint arc. Okay, let's go back to line. I'm just going to come into the body, it doesn't matter how far. And then let's just come down, just so I've got a close profile. Well, I don't have close profile, so let's just make sure I close that profile. Like that. You see, once it's intersecting the body, I've just sort of made sure it matches up, it doesn't like, or connects up rather, it doesn't matter because you're not going to see that bit anyway. Okay. So now. Let's finish sketch. Let's hit E for extrude. Hit that profile. Go to the side. Let's have a look at where that we think looks right. I'm going to go to new body again. Hit OK. So you can see we've got. Oh, oh sorry. So you can see we've got. Our blade, so we're gonna have a go. Now, I tried this before so, and it didn't work, so I'm just gonna show you. So, I'm gonna click on chamfer, and it didn't really work. Yeah, um, so what I ended up doing instead, actually, which I thought was quite a nice little workaround, so I used the pipe command. So, I'm gonna do create 
and pipe. And I'm going to click on this surface. I'm going to control with my <coughs> excuse me with my mouse. I'm going to turn off the handle body like that. I'm going to use this pipe line to cut away the surface so it looks like it is shot better. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that's the wrong button. Let's okay, let's see how that looks. Just mirror that and see how that works. Let's go to create and mirror. Still on body, so it's on body. Mirror plane. I think that looks pretty good, actually. So let's leave that as it is. If I wanted to, I could always go back and sort of change the diameter. So let's go for example, I'll show you what I mean. So I go to edit feature and say I didn't want it to be quite as thick. So let's say like that. And then you can see now that probably looks a little bit better actually. Like that. Okay, so then let's mirror. Let's go to create mirror bodies, that body, mirror plane. I want to do the back side there. Hit join. So we've now got our blade done. So our blade was much faster than doing our handle. So there you go, you can see that's done. So let's combine those together. So let's go to combine that body and that body. Hit OK. So now we've got our actual sword done. Uh, so we'll just add some materials to it and then we'll look at doing like a little background scenery type of thing to make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's hit A for appearances. Remember if you just can't find that so you just go to modify and down to appearances in the modify menu. So I think I went to metallic and then I went to no, I think what I did actually, I went to paint, then let's see. I'm going to look, let's do first of all the handle because that is that purple that takes up the most amount. So let's just grab one of these, it doesn't matter which one. Let's bring this up here. And let's try and find like a purple we like. A darkish purple, isn't it? Let's try that. Let's drag that on. Quite nice. How close is that? You know what? I think that's really close. Well done, me. Okay. So now let's bring in. So the reason we did that is otherwise we'd have to do every single one of these faces and it would have taken forever. But obviously, the whole thing doesn't need to be purple. So let's start adding a few more of the details in. We want like. Now we do have some green leather. Let's see if we can find that in there. But we've also got metallic yellow. Let's bring that in. That's what we need to do on these little. Diamondy bits. Yep, so let's change it to faces.
we'll have to do the same for the other side as well. Just remember as well, because I've already done the bodies, I'm now on faces, so just if you're trying to drag other materials or colours or paints on, and you're trying to do the whole thing, just make sure you're on uh, faces and not bodies. Seems it says this should be yellow as well, but let's look. Now we're going to need to split this face because along here it needs to be yellow as well. So let's just close this. Let's just create a sketch on here. I'm just going to do a line. Just along there. And then let's just rotate it around again. So I'll see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to modify, split face, split that face that face using a tool like that and that's just so that I can still add my yellow appearance just to that top little bit like the reference but now I can oh I've got faces now I can just do that bit there that's a nice little useful tool I've only recently discovered myself actually because I was struggling to make just spe uh, specific parts the colour I wanted and if I want you to do split faces um, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so that looks good. Do the same on the side. So let's just turn that sketch back on. Let's do the same again. Let's go to modify. Face, select that line, turn that off now, I don't need it, go back to appearances, again okay, make sure you've got faces selected, not bodies, otherwise it will undo everything we've just done. You do require a little bit of patience when you're adding materials. It does it's worth it because it makes it look really, really good, but it can be a little bit time consuming dragging on the materials that you need. But it's a hundred percent worth it because it makes it look so much better. It makes it look like a finished thing.
I think that's a yellow bit, or gold bit rather. I don't know if I do this little bit down here as well. So I've got the same in size. Okay, so next let's have a look at, I'll oh, just set this block away, but next we're going to have a look, try to get some nice leather for the lattice design that we've got on here. So I'm sure we've got, there is leather in here, I'm sure I've seen it before, so let's have a look. Uh, leather and cloth, leather. Like that of black green for the download. Okay, let's bring it on. Like that. Okay, that was easy. And the last thing, really, now is to do the blade. So I think we're going to go for like a steel sort of thing, aren't we? Really, it's probably. The best that's a look at like steel. Well, let's come up. And this should be the end of oh, our sword being done actually. So really the only the most difficult part really was the handle. The most time consuming bit was trying to get that lattice done, but in terms of it wasn't difficult, it was just a bit of trial and error trying to get the right measurements really. Then we've got to rotate it around to the other side. Okay, and I think that is 
the third finished. Let's just jump into render, see how that looks. Okay, so what I may do, so I'm not going to set it on Cloud Render in the with video because that'll take too long to do. But the last little bit, as in the other videos, we talked about having like a context of putting it somewhere. So, I mean, those that don't know, this is a, a sword from a game, um, or a, a series of games called Legend of Zelda. So this is like the Master Sword. Um, not to show off how much of a geek I really am. Um, but typically it's normally like embedded in something like the Temple of Time. So I've got a little reference image. That unfortunately it's a little bit stuff. It's kind of like a King Arthur like sword in the stone type of thing. It's all very dramatic, but it's a lot of fun. Um, so I may just do a quick little model of sort of like having that in there just again because I I don't like having things where it just sort of like floats in the middle of nothingness. I think it just looks a little bit odd, um, for want of a better term, really. Um, so let's just have a little play around. Let's go to offset plane. We're not gonna spend too long on this. Um. Well, we'll see how long it takes, really. But let's just have a little look. Okay. Oops. Something like that. Let's move this down a little bit. So move it down a little bit, a bit further down. Okay, and then what I might do is go to combine, but I'm going to go target body, tool body that, set it to cut. But then I want to keep the tool, otherwise it'll just delete my sword, which I do not want. Okay, and the whole reason of doing that, so now what you can see, if I turn off my sword, is it's got a little hole for where the sword would go, so it actually looks like it could be pulled out of it, so it actually looks like it's embedded in it properly. So we've got that, and then let's have a look. So it's sort of like a pedestal type of thing. Okay, so let's... Sketch the bottom of this. Let's go with polygon. So if I forward it, that's just a construction line, it's just so I know I'm going to be accurate. The whole point we're doing this now is just to make sure that I'm going to snap it right to the middle. Let's create polygon. There we go. So you can see it's starting to build up in there. If I'm not copying this exactly, I'm just sort of trying to give it a little... Oh, wrong thing. Trying to give it a little bit of context, make it look like it's not just floating in the middle of nothing necessarily. Okay, let's 
do one more, so let's let's get project that whole shape and let's offset it. Let's get the tail. Let's do it. And then let's just do the back walls to it, so let's fun. Sketch. And I'll probably do these side walls as well just to make sure that it looks about right. So that's inside. Okay, so I'm hoping now you can sort of zoom in, you'll see the whole scene to it. And then let's have a look at the details, maybe. Okay, wrong thing. <coughs> okay, so we'll have little areas coming up, maybe. Let's do. Okay, and then last little bit, maybe just having one coming across over there. Let's just do that. So, quick sketch.
last little bit over here. Like that. Okay, so it's not a huge amount of time. Let's just sort of try to give it a little bit of a, bit of a scene. Let's, but it's all very stone. Let's have a look in. There is definitely stone in here somewhere. So stone. Done it. Okay. So let's jump back over to render. Down a little bit. That looks better. Um, so I'm starting to think that steel doesn't look all that good. So let's. Okay, that looks much better actually. So let's just really quickly. So let's put the reactionist, let's isolate. Let's put the stainless steel polish, let's just add that nice and quick.
actually. Let's just lower it just a little bit. Okay, so let's have a look around. Okay, so let's unisolate. Get rid of that line that we put down there for some reason. There we go. Find out how they want it to look. Our render and see how it looks. So that's the end of the video. Oh, and I've actually saved it. That was a bad idea. Let's just... Okay, so yeah, that's the end of the sort of tutorial. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you've got any other ideas of something or you're struggling to draw something, uh, let me know and I'll do my best to do a little tutorial for you as well.